take and eat this is my body take and drink this is my blood dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus this is a homily for the solemnity of corpus christi or the body and blood of Christ and we reflect upon the gospel passage from saint mark's gospel chapter 14 about the institution of the eucharist This feast was introduced in the church in the 13th century by Pope Urban IV, inspired by the visions of St. Juliana of Liege about such a feast. It's a day to remember the great gift of the Holy Eucharist and to reflect upon our attitude towards it. Last Sunday we reflected upon the great mystery of the Holy Trinity, and today From that great mystery we come to another baffling mystery for we believe that in a small eucharistic bread our lord and savior jesus christ is present fully truly body and blood soul and divinity and in no other sacrament we experience jesus so intimately for here we eat his body and become one with him Therefore the Eucharist is not just one among the seven sacrament but the central one yes to quote Pope John Paul II the Eucharist stands at the center of Christian life in his encyclical Ecclesia the Eucharistia and it is the core of our catholic faith and life for from the Eucharist again i quote the church draws her life the pope continues in the same encyclical so today's feast must be an occasion for us to remind ourselves once again that the eucharist the consecrated host and wine in the holy mass is truly the body of christ and it is not just a symbol but how can we be so assured and we say so confidently it because it is what jesus himself as repeatedly asserted and later on also the apostles in today's gospel passage about the institution of the eucharist jesus taking the bread tells the disciples take and eat this is my body and over the cup he says take and eat this is my blood he did not say this is a symbol of my body or my blood or that it represents my body and blood do this in memory of me and this passage has to be read in connection with what jesus says in the gospel of saint john chapter 6 which is known as the eucharistic discourse there jesus repeatedly affirms in different words the same truth for example verse 35 says i am the living bread that came down from heaven Verse 51 I am the living bread which came down from heaven if anyone eats of this bread he will live forever and the bread which i shall give for the life of the world is my flesh verses 55 to 53 are much more affirming truly truly i say to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed and Saint Paul later on clearly states the same thing when he says the cup of blessing which we bless is a participation in the blood of Christ and the bread which we break is a participation in the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16. It is not about a symbolic expression, but here is a categorical assertion from Jesus and from St Paul. So our faith that Jesus is really and truly present in the Eucharist and it is the body of Christ
Truly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. The purpose of why Jesus established the Eucharist becomes clear, so that we may find life, energy, strength in him. But for how many of us believers who receive communion at least every Sunday, has the Eucharist become source of life and power and energy? Not many, I would say. The greatest problem is not that many don't believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, but that many who believe it does not live according to this belief. Saint Justin the Martyr wrote in AD 150, Not as common bread and common drink do we receive this, but in like manner as Jesus Christ our Savior. It is the flesh and blood of that Jesus who was made flesh. But we eat and drink it, receive it as we receive common bread and common drink. Our reception of the Eucharist has become part of our daily or weekly routine and not our daily lives. This is the reason why many of you are weak and ill and some have died, says St. Paul, 1 Corinthians 11-29. Though Jesus gave the Eucharist as a true food and drink, it is very different from our other food and drink we take. The difference lies in these words Jesus spoke to St. Augustine. You will not change me into yourself as you would do with food of your flesh, but you will be changed into me. The ordinary food we eat is transformed into our body cells and muscles and structures, but the food of the Eucharist transforms us into the body of Christ. The saying, you become what you eat, though nowadays is a reminder to eat healthy food, is the truth about the Eucharist. When we eat his body and drink his blood, the Eucharist, we are transformed into him. Our lives change and we receive the life of Jesus. But the question is, why is it not happening in our life? Why is there no change in our lives though a lot of us receive him every day. Maybe this story will help us to understand the problem. Once a joint team of Russians and Americans were on a common scientific expedition. Among their cabin foodstuff was Russian black bread. It was tasty but hard on teeth. It happened during a meal, an American bit a piece of it and snapped his tooth. He threw the bread overboard and growled, lousy communist bread. The Russian countered, not lousy communist bread, but rotten capitalist tooth. If we do not experience the transforming power of the Eucharist, it is not on account of a lousy Eucharist, but on account of our rotten faith. Yes, if the Eucharist does not give us any particular experience of Jesus, if it does not give us any power and energy, or if it does not transform us, the problem is our rotten faith, lack of faith, and lack of preparation. In John 6, 57, Jesus says, As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is supposed to be the result of participating in the Eucharist, a new and energetic life, full of spirit, enthusiasm. It should energize us to carry on with our daily lives. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Here he is, present in the Eucharist.
so near to it as the Lord our God is. Deuteronomy 4.7 May today's feast prompt us to stay close to him and receive his life, his power, and his healing. Let's not just believe that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist, but let us live that faith and approach the Holy Eucharist accordingly with the devotion, with preparedness, especially with the repentant hearts and minds. Let's remember what St. Paul reminds the community of Corinth. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let everyone examine himself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 28. Let's pray. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praises and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Amen.